It's going to be a great show, guys. We got the best comedians in the industry up tonight. Coming to the stage is one of my fucking favorites. Is gonna see, see, ugh, you're going to see this guy on Showtime next month. And he was just written up in Time Out as one of the funniest up and coming comedians in the nation. Put your hands together and show a lot of love for Mr. Mike DiStefano. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cringe Humor. Cringe. Cunt. Okay, yeah, you guys might be in the right place. I just want to make sure. Sometimes people show up and they get offended. We, it says it on the fucking sign. It's going to be offensive and annoying. It's going to disturb you. It's going to disrupt your cubicle fucking life that you've gotten used to. Sitting in a goddamn box made out of carpet all day, staring at a computer, developing tumors behind your eye sockets. You want to quit, but Friday's dress down day. <laughs> so you hang in there. You go for radiation on Wednesday, but you can wear Reeboks on Friday. So it's a good deal. I found a $10 bill on the sidewalk. Ten fucking bucks. How's that? Pretty good, right? There was a homeless guy three feet away from it. That sucks, don't it? <laughs> Doesn't that part suck? Yeah. And I got mad at him. I'm like, hey, look, you fucking idiot. Look what I found. It's right on the floor here. What are you looking up in the sky for? What are you, enjoying the homeless experience? Then he said, why don't you just give it to me? I said, I don't work for you. Find your own money. Plus, if I give you the money, that's not going to help you learn your lesson, is it? It's like homeless tough love. And I don't like to give money to the homeless because I feel I'm interfering with God's plan. Set it right on the sign, cringe humor. It's going to be a little disturbing. <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm not God. What do I know what God has in store for everyone? If I give a homeless guy money, I'm telling God, hey, I disagree with you. <laughs> then you get smited. <laughs> I'm a little sad lately. I got, I, they found a tumor near my heart. It's funny, you cocksucker. <laughs> Only one sick fuck laughed at that. You sick, sick bastard. And he's big, too. Look how big that guy is. And he don't look bright. He looks like he'd forget to stop hitting you. <laughs> like, yeah, the judge will be like, why were you still punching a guy? He was dead for two days already. And I don't know. It just slipped my mind. <laughs> well, it's like a mass, you know, around my heart. It's been aching my whole life. I never knew what it was. And they, it's the big C. Catholicism. It's a tumor of Catholic feelings and emotions. And they said the only way to remove it is with Buddhism. So I'm going to go practice. <laughs> All right, suck my balls. <laughs> the last crowd sucked, man. I booed them like a whole bunch of times. Sometimes, yeah, if I tell a joke, like I know it's funny. <laughs> and if you don't laugh, it's because you fucking bombed. It's just that simple, really. Think about it. What do you know about comedy? Any one of you. Shit. You don't, even have a, you don't even have a funny friend to hang out with, do you? You have to pay strangers and buy two drinks in order to have some joy in your life. And then you're going to judge us? I don't think so. I was in Florida. Anybody from Florida? Florida? No. I was down there. I was in Boca Raton. Anybody ever go or hear the place? You have? You've been there? It's like really wealthy, right? A lot, a lot of money there. I'm in a bar. This woman comes up to me. You could tell she was like loaded, you know? She had fake eyelashes, fake lips, fake hair, fake tits, looking for a real man. You know the type. <laughs> so she says to me, what do you drive? That was her fucking question. What do I drive? I said, how about if I drive a nail through your forehead? How would you like that? <laughs> how about if I drive a stake through your black soul, you evil bitch? How would you like that? Sorry, I have to warm you guys up. That was the other guy's job. Sorry. <laughs> no, you would have been if you would have been warm already. I wouldn't have to be putting up with your fucking giggles and smiles. I wish I was a stand-up giggle getter. I would be just crushing right now. This table's good. You guys are good. Usually only the black dudes are, are good. It's weird in the show. The black dudes love it. I don't even got to fucking talk. You know, I know he loves me. <laughs> No, black dudes, listen, everywhere I go, black men love me. Sometimes I feel like a chubby white girl. I really do. 
I'm like, am I a big, fat, white girl? Why do all the black dudes like me so much? I recently met a woman. She told me she was bulimic, this young lady. She said, I'm bulimic. I said, you don't even have an accent. That's amazing. <laughs> Boo! That was funny. I do it every night. These fucking people, what's wrong with them? Fucking special ed fucking audience. I'm going to say it again, all right? She said, no, it's a disease, bulimia. I said, well, let me get a condom. I don't want to catch none of that shit. You know what I mean? You guys ever hear of it? It's a disease. It's just like cancer, except you could stop. It's the only difference. Yeah. And only white girls catch it. Spoiled little blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white little twats from the suburb. They catch it from magazines. That's how they get it. Yeah. Black women can weigh 350 and wear a fucking baby gap outfit. And they'll walk up to you and say, I know you want some of this, motherfucker. And you're like, all right, I'll take it. I was just going to go bowling. But now that you pointed it out, I'd like to have some of that. Fucking stupid girl, you know. God, the weakest, most pathetic person on the planet is a spoiled little fucking white girl. The prettier, the prettier, the more fucking weak and pathetic they are. Because their parents raised them with this delusion that they're special. <laughs> Penelope, you're special. <laughs> you have a special vagina. <laughs> you have a wonderful vagina. It's farm grown. <laughs> you have a farm fresh, suburban white vagina. It's, it's not dirty like the Puerto Rican girls. It smells wonderful like lemons and coriander, it's a... And then they become 19, somebody says no to them and they have to go to the fucking hospital for surgery. Because they got disappointed. All right, I'm gonna have to pop it up a notch. You guys are pissing me off, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, I gotta be real honest. You guys know that the Cracker Barrel restaurant is owned by black people? Yeah, did, all right, she knows. Yeah, it puts a whole new fucking spin on the name, don't it? They wanted to call it the motherfucking white devil cracker ass cracker barrel, but the sign would have been too big. Now, what if a white guy opened a restaurant and named it the nigger basket? What would happen then? There would be big problems, wouldn't there? Now, you guys pushed me. I, I don't usually use the N-word unless I'm on a subway platform and they're down below and I could get out of there, but you guys pushed me. I was trying to do cute family shit but you fucking asked for it. <laughs> you know how black dudes, call, they call each other the N-word? What's up, my nigga? What's up, my nigga, right? And it makes it almost like the word isn't that bad anymore, right? Took some power out of the word. I think cunts should do the same thing. <laughs> Seriously. Cunts should be like, what's up, my cunt? There's my cunt, Jenny. Come on, where my cunts at? Where my cunts at? All the cunts in the house say, ho, cunt, please. Cunt, please. I made up a word, you want to hear it? Republicunt. I could use it in a sentence. Condoleezza Rice is a Republicunt. Now. Here's how I made the word. I took a filthy, disgusting, offensive word and put it with cunt. Do you see how I did that? Because I'm creative. I have a friend who acts gay. You anyone have a friend who acts, a straight guy? He's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He said, well, it's fun to act gay. <laughs> so I punched him in the esophagus. Because, you know, it's fun to act Christian, too, once in a while. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's a Chinese restaurant on 79th and Broadway. They have a suggestion box. Go in there tonight after this and write free Tibet and put it in <laughs> as a suggestion. It can help out, you know, if we all... <laughs> 
I don't think I've done ever since I started comedy. I've done that joke every show, and three to four people laugh at it every time, and the rest of you stare at me like I'm alluding to going to Las Vegas to bet. Now, <laughs> right? Either it's me or it's that you guys are all fucking stupid. <laughs> Let me see. I'm gonna go with you guys are all fucking stupid. See, Tibet was a little country that got slaughtered by the Chinese in the 50s, right? They went in there and just fucking annihilated these people. Millions of people were killed, pillaged, raped. But Great Britain and America, the two big fucking superpowers, we didn't help them because you know why? They have no oil. Fuck them! <laughs> what are we going to take from Tibet? Yaks? They have yaks. What the fuck are we going to do with yaks? Come on now. All right. Sorry. That was my political joke. That's all I got. Yeah. So, did you ever hear a guy say he would suck a dick for a million dollars? Just out of nowhere, right? I'd suck a dick for a million dollars. Would you? Let me tell you, a guy that would suck a dick for a million would do it for less. Talk him down. <laughs> Seriously, here's 10,000. How about 5,000? How about a bagel and a cup of tea, you fucking faggot? Now suck my dick. Come on, you guys. When I say faggot, I mean gay people. Stop. Relax. I went into a gay bar accidentally five times. Yeah, it was called, it was called Butt Wranglers. I had no idea. This big black dude came up to me. He wanted to do horrifying things to my ass. He said, I want to do horrifying things to your ass, man. That's how I knew. So I said, sir, I can't overcome racism and homophobia right now, all at once. Let me fuck a white man. If I like it, I'll holler at you. I'll holler at you. Marky Mark, is that my light up there? Okay, I thought so. I see that red. No, no, the next guy, don't worry. He's going to bring a puppet and make everything all better. Yeah. So... Yeah, I need like an hour with you people. I'll fucking straighten all of you out. <laughs> like a chiropractor. <laughs> a comedic chiropractor. Not all of you need it. Some of you do. Just the ones of you that are making those stupid faces at me. It just disgusts me. <laughs> well, I have a crippled friend. How's that? Yeah, do you? Probably not. You don't even make eye contact with the handicapped, do you? Okay, well, my best friend's in a wheelchair. And he lives in Florida, and he calls up in the winter and said, how's the weather every fucking year? How's the weather? How's the weather? I said, it's freezing, but at least I can walk. And hung up on him. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Cringe humor. Cringe. C-H-R-J-R-P-N-E. Dot com. <laughs> he drives a car. When the handicapped people drive, they really are selfish fucks because, like, they drive crazy with their hands, like fucking hand controls, and they go fast and in and out of cars because they're already crippled. They don't give a fuck what happens to you. <laughs> I made my friend let me out. I'm like, stop the car, let me out, buddy. I've, I've figured it all out. You're going to break a finger. Worst fucking scenario. <laughs> we'll be in a hospital. A doctor will say, uh, you guys are both going to not be able to walk again. No, no, doc, I'm not going to fucking walk again. He's not going to walk still. <laughs> See, he's going to still not walk tomorrow. Yeah, I'm the only guy here that's <laughs> not going to walk again. I'm the new crippled guy in the room. That's why he's watching cartoons and laughing. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. It's true. It's a true story. All right. In conclusion... You guys hear a 50 Cent, the rapper? I know a lot of you were white, but you probably saw about him. He got shot nine times, right? You heard about this, and he didn't die because black men can't shoot. That's the answer. There's no fucking... God didn't help him, bless him. No, he's not blessed. Black dudes shoot fucking sideways and fuck them for this piece of shit being alive still. Yeah, fuck him. He should have got shot in my fucking neighborhood. Two bullets... His name would be 48 cents. Because he's got all these little kids want to emulate him. They're walking down the street. What's up, son? Yo, son, you stepped on my foot, son. I'm going to fuck you up. So he told me. He said he's going to fuck me up. I said, that is the most adorable thing I've ever heard. 
come here and give me a hug. That is just. And then he said, yo, you bumped into me. Why don't you say, oh, excuse me? Oh, excuse me. Now, I carry a gun, and I hate fucking bad grammar. It really upsets me. So I put the gun to his fucking head. I did it like this so you'd feel at home. I said, look, I'm gonna have to fucking kill you, you little prick. And his friends are like, yo, dog, it's all good. It's all good. I said, no, it's not really all good, dog. You see, there's a fucking gun pointed at your friend. It's like all bad up in this motherfucker. So I said, I'm gonna kill your friend unless one of you can spell excuse me. He didn't make it. All right. Enjoy the rest of your show, everybody. Thank you.